This is CT Ready reporting live from Pine Town. And as you wear, it is lockdown level one. Spring has sprung, the birds are chirping, the frogs are croaking, things are happening. An experiment was conducted with some of the Red Zone kids. And so, all the way from his laboratory, Prof. Yubin Chubin has the results for us. So, over to you, Prof. Oh, hello, children. Professor Yubin Chubin here again. Oh, well, thank you, Christina. Yes, you're right. We are some of those smart Red Point kids. Two questions. The first question was What do you think the most important part? of your body is? And the second question, what do you think the least important part of your body is? Well, those are the questions we asked. Let's see what the answers were. The most important body part is the brain and the least important is the pinky toe. It's my mouth. The most important part of my body is my eyes and the least part of my body is my legs. The most important body part is the heart. The least important body part is the baby finger. God's various gifts are handed out everywhere. You can easily see how this kind of thing works by looking no further than your own body. Your body has many parts, limbs, organs, cells, but no matter how many parts you can name, you're still one body. It's exactly the same with Christ. By means of his one spirit, we all said goodbye to our partial and piecemeal lives. We each used to independently call our own shots, but then we entered into a large and integrated life in which he has the final say in everything. This is what we proclaimed in word and action when we were baptized. Each of us is now a part of his resurrection body, refreshed and sustained at one fountain, his spirit, where we all come to drink. The old labels we once used to identify ourselves, labels like Jew or Greek, slave or free, popular or unpopular, jock or geek, are no longer useful. We need something larger, more comprehensive, I want you to think about how all this makes you more significant, not less. A body isn't just a single part blown up into something huge. It's all the different but similar parts arranged and functioning together. If foot said, I'm not elegant like hand, embellished with rings, I guess I don't belong to this body, would that make it so? If ear said, I'm not beautiful like eye, limpid and expressive, I don't deserve a place on the head. Would you want to remove it from the body? If the body was all eye, how could it hear? If all ear, how could it smell? As it is, we see that God has carefully placed each part of the body right where he wanted it. But I also want you to think about how this keeps your significance from getting blown up into self-importance. For no matter how significant you are, it is only because of what you are part of. An enormous eye or a gigantic hand wouldn't be a body, but a monster. What we have is one body with many parts, each its proper size and in its proper place. No part is important on its own. Can you imagine eye telling hand, get lost, I don't need you or head telling foot, you're fired, your job has been phased out. As a matter of fact, in practice, it works the other way. The lower the part, the more basic and therefore necessary. You can live without an eye, for instance, but not without a stomach. When it's a part of your own body that you're concerned with, it makes no difference whether the part is visible or clothed, higher or lower. You give it dignity and honor just as it is, without comparisons. If anything, you have more concern for the lower parts than the higher. If you had to choose, wouldn't you prefer good digestion to full-bodied hair? The way God designed our bodies is a model for understanding our lives together as a church. 
every part dependent on every other part. The parts we mention and the parts we don't. The parts we see and the parts we don't. If one part hurts, every other part is involved in the hurt and in the healing. If one part flourishes, every other part enters into the exuberance. You are Christ's body. That's what you are. You must never forget this. So we see that the body that they're speaking about in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 represents the body of Christ, which is the church. So just like you have different parts of the body, there are different members of the church, but we all belong to the same body because we are the body of Christ. And so in verses 14 to 19, we see comparison is happening in this body, which is not helpful because each, each member of the body has equal value and each should be respected. And so we see that this comparison is happening. And so within my own life, when I was younger, I would also compare. So I was responsible for shining the furniture when I was younger. But I didn't want to shine the furniture. I thought the most important job was to clean the toilets and mop the floor because I saw my sisters doing it. And I thought, oh, that's clearly the more important job. Why am I getting this job of shining the furniture? And I never liked shining the furniture and uh, because I was always comparing. And so with at times, I would even forget to shine the furniture and my mom would have to shine the furniture for me. She would have to take on my load because I just had such a bad attitude about shining the furniture. And uh, we see that this body is doing the very same thing. In verse 21 to 26, we see that we cannot live without the different members of the body. Each one has a function. And so even though I'm not praising my heart, everywhere I go, if I didn't have my heart, I wouldn't be alive. You know, if I didn't have my lungs, I wouldn't be able to breathe. And so each member of the body is just as important. And so often you would maybe find yourself comparing and saying, oh, the kids that are doing these Kidsman videos, they are so important. Or, or maybe you might think to yourself, oh, I could never be like them, you know, or you could, you know, think, oh man, you know, all of the people that are speaking on the mic, they must be so important. And so you start compar uh, comparing and which limits your gifts actually, because you won't actually be able to discover your gifts if you keep looking to someone else and their gifts. And so one of the things that I also learned was that I needed to embrace the gifts that God has blessed me with. And so one of the gifts that I have is creativity. And again, uh, one of the tasks that I was meant to do when I was younger was setting the table. And I found just one aspect of my gifting in creativity there. And I didn't want to shine, I didn't want to decorate the table um, for dinner. I thought it was a lonely job and I couldn't be involved in the kitchen. Um, so at the time, because I was too young and it was lonely, um, but I continued doing it. And eventually I started really liking decorating the table. But if I wasn't faithful back then about just setting the table, then, you know, I probably would have missed out on one of the gifts that God has blessed me with. And so I want to encourage you to find out what are your spiritual gifts. The Bible says that there are many spiritual gifts and you can go and read in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And so there's wisdom and knowledge and faith and healing, miracles, prophecy, discernment of spirits, um, speaking in tongues, the interpretation of tongues. Then there are different uh, positions within the church, apostles, prophets, teachers. And, and so on. And so you can go and read it for yourself. But um, I really want to challenge you, you know, find your spiritual gifts in this time to strengthen the church in this time. And so try and get involved in something. I often ask you, what can you get involved in? So maybe you can get involved in the feeding scheme or packing off COVID-19 distribution boxes or 
whatever else there is, maybe the welcoming team, maybe serving tea and coffee, find out what your, your strengths are and do it. If it's just shining the furniture, just shine the furniture if you're really good at it. Or if it's just making tea, you make that tea. <laughs> if it is just decorating the table, you decorate that table. You know, find your gifts and, and would you use it to, to build the church in this time. And if there's a particular gift that you feel very strongly about, would you seek some counsel from people who you know are really good in that particular gift? So let's say it's teaching, then learn from other teachers. Um, if it's prophecy, then learn from other people who are gifted in that area of prophecy. So really want to encourage you in this time, you have your part to play, kids. So would you play your part in rebuilding the church? Hey kids, hope you guys are well. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Tremaine and I have the great opportunity of speaking to the great servants. So without further ado, let me get started. So great servants, you guys are a big fish in a small pond and next year you guys are going to high school and that can be a bit frightening because you guys are going to be big fish but you're going to be in a bigger pond with even bigger fish and it can be a bit overwhelming you may be nervous you may even be happy i don't know but if you're nervous you're anxious you know you're feeling down about this or scared i just want you guys to know that you guys can trust in god to, to deliver you out of the situation and a little testimony I like to share is that when I was your age, um, four years ago, um, I could not decide on which high school I was going to. I had three options, and they were all very good options, you know. And we could, and as a family, like with my mom and dad, I couldn't decide where I wanted to go. And you know, after months of like not being on the same page with my parents, we decided that actually, what we should we should have done this in the first place, and actually trust in God. And God was able to show me that I should go to the school. And I won't even lie, being in this being in the current school that I am in, it's been scary. It's been it's it's tested my faith. And actually there are times where I question God and I think, God, why would you put me here? But actually God wouldn't put you in a place where he wants to harm you. It may feel like that, but he'd never do that to you. He'd put you in a place where he wants you to fulfill his word and yes at times it can get scary it's part of life but what's even more important than the scary things is that you always trust in god and you always you always think of him through the good through the bad and that you always trust in him and you always love him and that no prayer that you have is too big where he can't for where he can't provide for you and no prayer is too small where he thinks that it's too it, it doesn't matter to him so I just want you guys to know that you guys can trust in God and yeah, all the best for the great servants who are going to be in high school next year and hope to see you guys soon. Cheers. From the highest of heights to the depths of the sea Colors of fall to the fragrance of spring. Every creature unique in the song that it sings, all exclaiming, indescribable, uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing, God. Yeah, conceals 
Come